All right, guys, self-love is a really big idea. Are you guys with me? Yeah. So, so have you ever been taught a philosophy or learned a philosophy that has so radically shaken up your being that you could not sleep at night? I don't know, anyone in the audience? Like, where you learned something new and you just you couldn't, you couldn't sleep at night because it was so radically different from everything you'd ever been taught before in your life? OK. Well, that's what happened to me. So when I was uh, in high school, she was my sophomore year English teacher. And she did not want to be there. She had higher callings in life. She wanted to be a fiction editor. She wanted to be a playwright. She wanted to be a university professor. She did not want to be teaching kids at Oceanside High School, especially not 15-year-olds. So she did some things that were representative of this. First, she ranked us according to our, her perceived intelligence of us the first week of school. So I get there, and then I am told I am number 24 out of 26 people in our class <laughs> based on intelligence. And it was like that the whole year. I had to work in a group with number 25 and 26 every project of the year. She, she was not one of my favorites at all because she introduced me to a philosophy that shakes me. It shakes me every day. I think about it. I, I don't want to think about it, but I do. So, so, so one day after lunch, we always had our class right after lunch in a nice food coma when you should be pretty relaxed and chilled and quiet. And there on the board is one word. This one word rattled me. This word is existentialism. I know. Ra raise your hands if you are familiar with existentialist philosophy in any way. OK, maybe like a third of the room, 40% if we're counting generously. Um, existentialist philosophy, I just want to go over some of the core tenets of this philosophy. It is scary stuff. First, the world around you is absurd. Nothing has meaning. It is all nonsense. The world is filled with hope. and uh, Sorry, without hope. It is a hopeless world. You are filled with despair. The world is nihilistic. You are nothing. You are a speck of dust. You are no different than the speck of dust on this stage. And I was 15, and she is telling me this, and I freaked out. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom this, because I'd grown up in a nice, good home. We, I was you know, uh, you know, pretty reformed, secular Jew. We, we were told, OK, you, you have purpose in the world. You have meaning in the world. And then suddenly, this woman comes into my life and says, no, you don't have any meaning. You are worthless. You are nothing. OK. I thought about this for a while. And I, you know, I'm a little neurotic, and I had many sleepless nights over this. And it was, it was, it was damaging. So I thought, OK, OK. I, I didn't know what to do, really. For years, years went by, years went by. And I thought about this philosophy. I thought, I'm nothing, absurd. Hopeless, despair, nihilism, yeah. And then one day I decided I was going to do some independent research into existentialism. And I discovered that Ms. Bassin left out a lot of the really good things about existentialism that she should have taught us, but she didn't teach us. These things were you have freedom in the world. The amount of freedom you have is dizzying. You have choices. You all chose to be here today. You could have chosen to be anywhere, but you chose to be here today, right? You have choices. You are authentic people. You are different than you are different than you are different than you. You are authentic, and you can be authentic in this world and thrive and be awesome. Have you ever been pigeonholed at work, at school, at home? Has there ever been a time when someone has put you in a box and said, this is you? I'm asking a question. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's happened to me a bunch. And what does that cause in your life? For me, that causes an existential crisis. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it definitely happens to me. Uh, so, 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 for example, there, there's a picture of me about age 10. And growing up, I was chubby. I was pudgy. And you know what? I, I was not an athlete, but I always wanted to be an athlete. But, 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 but for 10, you know, for, until I was in my late 20s, a couple of years ago, I thought, I can never be an athlete. I can never be good at sports. But then, when I read up about this good stuff of existentialism, the good existentialism, I thought, you know what? Why can't you be an athlete? 
Why can't you just remake yourself as an athlete? You have the freedom. You have the choice. So when you have an existential crisis, how are you going to get out of it? You have to make that choice. And for me, that choice involves going on the bike and looking into the mirror. And that's what we're going to do right now. Because you know what? We have a bike here on stage. And that's awesome. I don't know where it came from, but it's awesome that there's a bike here. And then when you're riding your bike on stage, you just look at yourself in your mirror and you say, the world is a confused, meaningless, absurd place, Stephen. How do you make sense of this absurdity? Why are you riding a bike on stage? What can you do better today? What must you compromise on to make your life better? Where is... Just keep going. You just keep going. What is holding you back? <sighs> Whether you like it or not, Stephen, you exist. <laughs> define yourself, Stephen. Come on, don't let others define you. Don't let them say you're a crazy guy on a bike. Come on, come on. Are you the person you were six years ago? No, you are not the person you were six years ago. You have to create your own values. You have to be a freer spirit today than you were yesterday. Have you overcome all of your challenges? Have you overcome the herd mentalities of people around you? Why aren't you a freer spirit than you were yesterday? Freedom is dizzying. Don't let choice make you anxious. Keep climbing higher. Say yes now, you can always say no later. <laughs> yeah, and that, that is how existentialism usually works for me. And when I get off that bike, I feel like a million dollars, sometimes I feel like a billion dollars. Sometimes, on very rare days, I feel like a trillion dollars. But other times, I don't. Sometimes I still have more questions after staring at the mirror on my bike. I have way more questions than I had before. And then I have to go and go look back into the mirror and say, hey, what are you doing here, man? What is going on? But then, you look in the mirror because you need to love yourself. Because if you love yourself, then all is good, right? So that, look into the mirror. I want everyone to look into the mirror. Do you see yourself back there, up there, down there? Yeah? If you look into the mirror and love yourself, that is the missing part of the equation. That is what Miss Bassin forgot. That is also what the existentialist philosophers forgot. They did not realize that self-love is an important part of the equation. I'm going to try to do that again. Yeah. Self-love is the really cool fabric that you need to make existentialism work. And I want you to repeat after me <laughs> right now. Everyone here, I want you to repeat after me. Just listen closely. Ice cream is no substitute for self-love. I want you to repeat that out loud with me. One, two, three. Ice cream is no substitute for self-love. And this is the equation. This is the master equation that the existentialists never thought to think about. And that is what you must remember. So keep inquiring, but also keep loving yourself. That is it. I'm done. Stephen Robert Morse. Thank you. Have a great day.